Teachers' unions say the government's scientific advisers haven't fully answered their concerns about whether it's safe to allow more children to return to schools in England next month. Some teachers argue social distancing will be difficult, particularly for younger pupils. However, the government says it's issued guidance and offered support for a phased return from June the 1st. Here's our education editor, Branwyn Jeffries. At the heart of a village, trusted by its families, a school working out how to reopen. This is our early years environment. For and for the youngest, all would change. The rugs, the soft chairs, the soft cuddly toys are things that we're probably going to have to get rid of. The head says this can't be made safe by June. Does it smite your heart a bit that this is all going to have to go? Not just a bit. We're asking them not to interact with each other, not to play together. Is it, is it childcare or are we still continuing to develop those children? This is our corridor which takes us through to key stage two. She'll try to open for years one and six. It's not even two metres width. That's going to be one way, surely. You would think, but then how do we manage that? Almost every day, new government advice. Parents will need to leave via the new exit. More changes to be put in place by June the 1st. I'm worried about how close that is. There are still very high rates of new cases. There are still very high rates of deaths across the country. I feel that it is all being very rushed. Each school is trying to work out what it can manage in a couple of weeks' time. And in many cases, that could be less than the government's suggesting. And then it's up to parents whether they choose to send their children to school. Jenny's boys have been in school. She's a key worker. Some of Isaac's year six friends will return. Overall, it's been a positive experience for them. There is some real value, I think, for a child's mental health to be out of their home environment for some time. But Heather doesn't want Isabel in nursery. She thinks her girls are safer at home. The risks are just too high. She's too little to understand about the social distancing measures that are out there. And I think it's more important that she stays at home where she's safe and she's happy. The risk is linked to the number of cases in the community. The doctors' union says it's too high to open schools. But a government medical expert says cases will fall by June. In an average infant school with 100 children, the likelihood of anybody having this disease is very small and diminishing with time. So I think we just need to keep that in perspective. Many teachers say they want pupils back when the science shows it's safe. A meeting between unions and experts today described as just the first step. It's not unreasonable to ask that we, we engage with government uh, to understand uh, how, how safe it is why they say it's safe and that we can build our plans based upon that scientific basis. Schools are changing in preparation, not knowing how many pupils might turn up. The rest of the UK watching, England alone in plans to reopen schools so soon. Brown and Jeffries, BBC News. The congestion charge in central London, which was suspended because of the lockdown, will return from Monday. The Mayor of London says it'll help prevent a build-up of traffic after the government's easing of restrictions, included advice that people going back to work should avoid public transport. A refund system for NHS workers is being extended to care home workers. Police in England and Wales have issued more than 14,000 fines for alleged breaches of lockdown laws. The Met Police in London handed out the most fixed penalty notices, 906. But it's also been revealed that 56 people across the UK have been wrongly charged with offences relating to the pandemic. Now, Wales's First Minister has promised a cautious route out of lockdown that he says puts people's health first. Mark Drakeford outlined what he called a traffic light system, but warned he couldn't give a clear timetable for when restrictions could be lifted. Our Wales correspondent, Hal Griffith, has the story. What would a second wave of the pandemic bring to a place like Aberystwyth? Largely sheltered from the first in this county, they've had the lowest infection rate in Wales. The national lockdown arrived just in time to save us. At the local hospital, they feel they've been spared for now. The lockdown slowed the spread of the virus from east to west, but lifting it could mean they would be hit much harder. It would not take a large number of cases to uh, 
take up all our resources. So we certainly survive on a limited bed base. We also have a limited number of physicians. We're not close to other hospitals to bring people, staff, physicians, nursing staff from elsewhere if there was to be a major outbreak amongst the staff. The plan set out for Wales today means Aber's prom will remain empty for now. It's a roadmap with destinations but no dates attached. Only when the scientists say it's safe will Wales move from the current red phase to amber, allowing some pupils back to school and people to meet in small groups. The green light for unrestricted travel seems very far away. The journey has begun, uh, but for all of us, that journey needs to be a journey taken carefully, taken cautiously, with a limited number of steps to suppress the circulation of coronavirus and to keep us all safe. That slow, almost static pace is frustrating for some. This caravan park has had a flurry of calls this week from people desperate for a holiday this year, but they still don't know when or even if they'll be able to open. To close all tourism businesses for the entire season would be, would be devastating for uh, not just for ourselves but for uh, people who rely on uh, the businesses, the business that we bring, pretty much all businesses in, in town and across the county. This spring shutdown may well spread into the summer with lives and livelihoods here both still in the balance. Howell Griffith, BBC News, Aberystwyth. This weekend is the first since the lockdown restrictions were eased in England, allowing unlimited exercise and travel in order to enjoy the open air. But the rules vary depending on where you live in the UK. So, while you can take longer journeys in England, like to facilities of te tennis courts and golf courses in Northern Ireland, you can drive somewhere to exercise, but you can't stray too far from home. While in Scotland and Wales, you have to stay in your local area. And you can't meet up with members of different households, a rule that also applies in Northern Ireland, whereas in England you can meet one other person outside adhering to social distancing rules. Well, the easing of England's guidelines has been welcomed by some, but others in tourist areas worry about a possible big influx of people, as Sean Lloyd explains. These residents of Stratford have been a fixture for generations, but for the past eight weeks their surroundings have been significantly quieter than usual. The historic town is a magnet for tourists from far and wide and the economic impact of the lockdown has been felt here. But after the government advice was changed for people living in England, visitors are beginning to return. This couple have travelled some 50 miles from their home in Leicestershire. Because uh, Boris said we can go further afield, that we'd met the most of it. This is our normal life. We like to get out and about. So we're just going to have a walk around the river and we're going to have a, we've brought his own uh, flask of coffee and we're going to have that and then we'll have a steady ride home. We are sensible but I think these two just needed to have blow off a little bit of steam and have a little bit of a change of scenery really. This family live within the same county, now able to visit one of their favourite places. A bit of a picnic. And a yeah. little picnic and feed the ducks and it's just been nice to just get out. Especially <laughs> since lockdown has been a bit further. eased up yeah. a little bit more, yeah. you know, as long as sticking to the guidelines. The countryside in England is beginning to reopen. The National Trust will unlock the gate to this car park tomorrow morning, but people are already parking here to walk and the charity says it expects a huge influx over the weekend. They're urging people not to travel long distances to their favourite destinations and to visit places closer to home for the time being. You have to understand, I think, as a visitor, that obviously local communities near places you like to visit are rightly concerned about, about huge volumes of people arriving. So we ask you to be extra thoughtful and respectful about their concerns. And obviously, if a footpath goes past a house, make sure you're really mindful of that. Many restrictions are still in place and fines are imposed when rules are broken. Authorities here are welcoming people to the town but warn it's not business as usual. Sean Lloyd, BBC News, Stratford-upon-Avon.